Hey guys, Dan Carr here with another video uh, about the gear that I'm going to be taking on an upcoming trip. So uh, this particular trip is to Asia. I'm heading to Hong Kong first to be part of the Red Bull Illum ceremony. And uh, after that, I'll be heading to Bangkok for a couple of days and then on to Cambodia for about 10 days of shooting. So um, as every trip has different requirements in terms of uh, amount of equipment and type of equipment, I like to do these videos. I know you guys like to see them. Uh, about what equipment I'm going to be taking with me. So the special requirement on this trip is really that I want to travel as lightweight as possible. Um, I'm going to be taking various modes of transport, um, a lot of flights, a lot of buses, tuk-tuks, boats, and uh, quite some time driving around in a, in a four-wheel drive vehicle as well. So essentially I'm going to be loading and unloading my gear a lot. Um, what I travel with needs to be robust and lightweight, and I want to travel with just one duffel bag and one camera bag. So I need to get everything, uh, the, the weight requirements for my flights are slightly different. I basically need to get everything in this bag under 21 kilos, and then I'll have my camera bag as well. So the main duffel that I've chosen for this trip, um, and this is the one I've been using uh, for a lot of recent travels, is the Arc'teryx Covert duffel. Uh, as you can see, it's a soft-sided duffel bag, but it kind of has, uh, has a little bit of rigidity to it in the, the way that it's designed. So it's sort of cubic, um, which is good for slotting into spaces. Um, they make this in, in two colors and three different sizes. This is the check-in size, the CI size. They have a carry-on and an international carry-on size as well. And what I absolutely love about these is you get the, um, the durability of any Arc'teryx product, but you get something that's really discreet. Now I'm gonna put a lot of expensive equipment in this. And I want a bag that people don't take a second look at when it's on the baggage carousel. Ideally, I don't want customs to uh, want to have a second look at it when I'm, you know, when I'm coming into a country. So, you know, staying, staying off the radar um, with something nice and discreet is really important. And this Arc'teryx Covert Duffel does an incredible job at that. It's super easy to travel with as well because you've got handles on all four of these sides. So whichever way you throw it, there's a place to pick it up. On the end here, there's a little zippered pocket you can't quite see, but out of that folds two shoulder straps. So if you need to sling it on your bag, on your on your back, sorry for a, um, a you know for a quick trip, then that's totally possible. And then of course you can use one of them and just throw it over your shoulder. So they they stash away in the end pocket, so you've got a nice clean bag for throwing on the baggage carousel. Let's open this up and see what's inside. Um, actually, there's there's a huge pocket on the top here as well, which is good for all those last minute things that you forgot to put in the main section. Uh, inside we have a, a lid pocket. I just have uh, a, a sun hat in here, just a, just a soft, uh, this is an Arc'teryx hat as well, but it's gonna be really hot and sunny in Cambodia. So I definitely, uh, I'm gonna be outdoors all day long. I need something to keep the sun off my head. Let's open this up. Now, the design of this duffel is just one simple main pocket. There's a small zippered one on the front, but essentially all your gear is going in this main compartment. So inside this, I like to put smaller bags with uh, different equipment, you know, so it's kind of compartmentalized and I can get through things really quickly. Um, the, the largest one is uh, made by a company called On-Site Equipment here, and it's just this big mesh, uh, mesh, sort of mini duffel bag and this is where I put all my clothes so uh, that keeps that completely separate and when I get to location I can grab this and uh, that makes it really easy in here I've just got a bunch of lightweight shirts because it's going to be super hot a uh, pair of shorts pair of pants one sweatshirt and uh, that's about all I need for this trip um, let's take that out Next thing in here, uh, this is by a company called Pack Towel. This is actually a full-sized towel, but it's uh, it's super thin, but incredibly uh, quick drying. And I'm gonna be doing, I'm not always gonna be in hotels on this trip. I'm gonna be doing some home stays with Cambodian families at some point. So I've gotta take a towel with me and, uh, you know, I'm trying to travel light, so this is a perfect solution for it. Really, really small and lightweight, and as I said, really quick drying. So if you're just in and out, moving around, and you gotta throw a towel back in your bag on the same day you've used it, this is awesome. Uh, next up, toiletries, nothing interesting there. Just a little North Face uh, toiletry bag. 
in this hard case I have a Zoom H6 audio recorder. I'm going to be doing a couple of interviews while I'm on the road and I'm also reviewing this for, uh, for my website. So the Zoom H6 is in here with a couple of different microphone attachments and it comes with this handy carrying case so that's kind of neat. Uh, next up, this here, the main camera bag that I'm taking, which we'll see in a minute, is the Mindshift Gear Rotation 180 Pro. And this is kind of an accessory lid compartment that you can add to the top to add a little bit more volume. It makes a neat little bag for packing things in your main case as well before you get to location. So let's open this up. In here, in here I have a, a pair of rain pants. This is, uh, these are some super lightweight Arc'teryx rain pants. Um, incidentally, I'm gonna put a list, look in the description of the video and you'll see a link to a list of all of this equipment um, so you can get a little bit more detail. It's monsoon season, basically rainy season where I'm going in Cambodia. So it's gonna be wet, wet at some point. And uh, whilst a lot of the time there's nothing you can do about it, it's handy to have your rain gear with you just in case you need to make a long walk at that exact moment where it decides uh, to chuck it down. So, rain pants. The next thing I have in here, um, these go with my shorts. And these are something you might not think about, but trust me, this is really useful. These are zip off, these are the bottom parts of my shorts. So they're zip off pants, basically, to turn my shorts into pants. Um, why might I need these? Because they're kind of dorky, but if it's really hot, and it will be really hot, um, forecast is above 30 degrees every day. I'm gonna be visiting uh, a lot of religious sites in Bangkok and throughout Cambodia. So some of these uh, Hindu temples, they require you um, to have your legs covered. And if you're having a long day, which includes a stop off at one of these temples, you don't wanna wear pants all day long. So this is perfect. Fold this up, throw it in your pocket, and when you get to where you need to wear pants, zip these on. Uh, this is, yeah, they're just amazing for that kind of thing. And then uh, as well, if you're going through some particularly thick um, jungle as well that's, that's got some, some good thorny bits, that can be really helpful for protecting your legs as well. So um, yeah, pants, uh, I don't really like to wear them in hot weather, so shorts with a zip off pants section are just perfect for me. So then this is the lid um, for the, the Rotation 180 and I'll just attach this when I get to where I'm going. Uh, footwear. This is, a, is an interesting question actually. When you're going to these sort of hot, humid climates, um, what's the best footwear to, to wear? What, you know, do you want to keep your feet dry? Um, my advice is that something like a waterproof Gore-Tex boot is useless. Uh, you just can't stop your feet from getting wet in rainy season. Um, you know, it can go from being no water on the ground to four inches of water on the ground in, in just a couple of minutes. And the best thing that you can do is just have a shoe that will dry quickly. So uh, these are Solomon shoes. I think they're called the Amphibian. Um, they're basically designed for getting wet and then getting dry again. So uh, they're mostly mesh. And uh, so they offer, they offer a bit of protection to your feet as well if you need it. But um, most importantly, they will dry super quickly. So I'm taking these and a pair of flip flops and that's gonna be my footwear. Um, those sort of sandals with straps on across them as well, they can be, um, they can be really useful and, and also do the same thing. You know, they would dry really quickly, but uh, Solomon amphibian shoes is what I'm packing. Got a little pouch here from Think Tank. This is called the RU Hot. It's part of their belt system. Um, Normally this is slated for carrying a water bottle and some snacks, but um, it's actually, it's made of mesh. And so it's their smallest, um, smallest little belt pouch, the sort of belt lens pack that they do. Um, when I'm wandering around a city and I have a camera over my shoulder, I often have a 24 to 70 on the camera or something like that. I'd like to take a prime lens as well for sort of low light situations. So this is the smallest lightweightest, lightest bag that I can take with me. Uh, just attach it to my belt and throw a prime lens in here while I'm walking around so I don't need to carry a camera bag in the city if I don't have to. Next up, camera strap. Simple, uh, this is my CPS Canon neoprene strap. Nothing too interesting going on there. Uh, waterproof case for this duffel bag. I do expect at some point to get caught outside with this bag in the rain and uh, when it rains it really pours there so this is a simple 
Uh, this one's an Arcteryx one, but many companies make just basic uh, waterproof covers for your bag. So that's kind of important on this trip. Waterproof camera cover. This is made by Think Tank. Uh, oh, here's an interesting thing. This is made by a company called PackSafe. I open this up. I can't really get the whole thing out because it's kind of clumsy to do that. Um, but essentially, you see this is like this huge mesh bag that goes over your other bag and then it has a padlock on it. And uh, what this does is it secures your, your pack uh, or your suitcase or whatever in your hotel room. Um, and not only does it lock it to something in your room, but it also prevents people from opening the bag. So it's, it's like a huge wire mesh bag that surrounds your other bag and then you tighten it up and lock it to something sturdy in your room. And this means that nobody can steal your bag from the room easily anyway. But uh, also more importantly for me, nobody can unzip the bag and take things out of it. So the holes in the mesh are too small to pull a camera lens out or something like that. So with this around my camera bag in my room, I can safely leave, you know, if I'm going out for a walk, I can take a camera and a lens and I can leave five or six other lenses in the hotel room with my laptop and another camera body sort of locked up inside this pack safe, uh, which just wraps around my, my rotation 180. Actually, it would even wrap around this bag. This one's a big one. Uh, and that means that, you know, because sometimes you have a hotel room that doesn't have a safe, we have a safe that's really not big enough for much more than your cell phone and your passport. So this is made by PackSafe. This is the 85 liter version. I think they run about $90, so they're not cheap. Uh, but as you can see, it folds up pretty small and it does just give you that little bit of extra protection if you're traveling in a part of the world where things aren't necessarily that safe in your hotel room. So next up, um, have a bunch of little bags made by Outdoor Research, which I use for kind of sorting things out. These ones have, uh, that has some clothing in it. This orange one has my really right stuff panoramic head. I uh, don't know how much pano work I'm going to be doing, but I like to travel with this if I can. So um, that just sort of protects it from the odd scratch in there. Uh, the material that Outdoor Research used for these bags is incredibly strong, but just so lightweight that you can really use a load of these little bags for organization, and it doesn't really add to the weight of your, your pack overall. So uh, moving along the same lines, these are some, some others, little, same material, just the zippered pouches made by Outdoor Research. This is where I keep all the little trinkets and things, so let's have a look inside, see what we've got. Double A battery charger. Lens blower cleaner, uh, small first aid kit. Uh, incidentally, this for this particular trip, this has some extra things in it, um, which uh, you know sort of settle um, upset stomachs and things like that, um, and uh, recover you from dehydration, and also have some water purification tablets in it. So, depending where you're headed in the world, those can be useful things to have. Uh, quick release strap for my shoulder strap for my camera. This just uh, really right stuff bracket on here just clamps onto the L bracket on my camera. Cyber power 12 volt adapter. Uh, plugs into the cigarette lighter socket in a car, gives you a USB port and a three pin plug socket. Uh, brilliant if you forget to charge up a battery and you're going on a long trip or you're going on a trip that's so long you've used all your batteries and uh, I know that some of the places I'm going in Cambodia either don't have power at all or only have power for a small amount of time in the evening. So if that's not time enough for me to charge what I need to charge, I can charge things while we're driving. Uh, Canon battery charger. I travel with two of these. I split them up, one in each bag, because this is a must have thing. You don't want to be caught short without a battery charger. So I split them up just in case one bag gets lost. Um, small bug net. This just goes over your head. Uh, there's quite a lot of bugs in some of the more jungly parts where I'm headed, so that might be handy. This is a lacy, rugged drive. I think we've got 500 gigabytes here. Uh, I travel with two hard drives when I'm on the road. Both of them are mirrors of each other, and I keep them, again, in separate bags. So you can't have them in the same bag just in case one gets lost or stolen. So this rugged one, uh, 
it really is pretty rugged. It's been thrown around a lot over the years and it's just fine for just tossing in here with all this other junk and uh, yeah, it seems to be fine every time. So this is my backup drive. We'll see the other drive in a minute. Small bottle of sunscreen. Uh, because I'm traveling light, I don't have enough clothes for the last two weeks. I'm going to be doing some washing. So I have a sort of bungee washing line, which is pretty handy. Again, it doesn't really weigh anything, so that's really useful. And then this is my filter holder. This is a high-tech filter holder uh, with adapter rings and uh, one stage for a 4x6 filter and also a 105mm polarizer adapter. I've dismantled it here because it just, just travels a little bit easier when it's broken up like that, but um, that's what that is. And all of that stuff fits in this first little pouch. Another one of these uh, outdoor research accessory bags. Uh, this one here has a really right stuff tabletop tripod in it. I can't remember the exact model number of it, but they only make one. So if you go to reallyrightstuff.com, you will find this. Um, I've got a big tripod. So the reason I'm taking this though, is for those situations where you find a place that says no tripods allowed, which is a thing that's happening more and more these days, particularly uh, more touristy attractions or uh, buildings and things where you want to get a view from the top. They often don't allow you to take a tripod, but this will give you some great support if you've got some sort of railing or barrier uh, or a wall. You can usually find a way to brace the camera with this. And it's really sturdy. It's strong enough to sit there and hold uh, 5D Mark III with a 24-70 f2.8 on it. So it's really, it's pretty handy to have. Uh, little battery holder from Think Tank Photo. It's got about eight AA batteries in it. Leatherman. Uh, I never know what you're going to need this for, so I always travel with a Leatherman no matter where I'm going. Uh, some some really thin sort of cord and rope. Uh, again, this is sort of a, more of an emergency thing. If uh, something breaks on one of my bags or a strap or something like that, I can fix something with this. Um, this is a a Thunderbolt adapter for my Seagate drive. We'll see the Seagate drive in a minute. Um, it runs on USB 3, but it can be adapted to be used with Thunderbolt if I need to. So that's coming with me. And then we're down to torches and things like that. A headlamp is one of these must have accessories. If you're shooting sunrise and sunset and things like that, you are gonna be out in the dark at some point because you're gonna to wanna to be there before sunrise. So uh, a head torch is just uh, comes with me on every single photography trip. This is just, uh, what make is this? It's a Petzl one. Um, pretty cheap, I don't know, about $40 or something like that, but it does the job. And I have uh, a small LED torch as well. This is just takes a AA battery made by a company called Five Sevens. Um, I've used this for, for some light painting in the past. Um, this one tends to stay in my backpack. And if you're wearing a head torch, you sort of limit it a little bit to what's right in front of you. Sometimes it's handy to be able to look around a bit faster with a torch. So that's why that one stays in there. And then I have a larger version of the same thing, but it takes two batteries and it's a little bit more than twice as powerful. And this is just uh, good for light painting larger subjects. So that's coming with me as well because I have a few ideas to, to do something with that. And, uh, and that's all the sort of little accessories and trinkets I have. Oh no, wait, one more thing. Um, really right stuff, kind of uh, tripod multi-tool, I guess you might call this. Just looks like a screwdriver, but when you pop the bottom off, it's got all the different uh, accessories that you need for tightening everything on your tripods and uh, L brackets and stuff like that. So that's a really handy little thing to have. And then the last thing in here is the tripod itself. Let's grab this. Um, you know, I've got a couple of tripods from Really Right Stuff. I've decided to take the TQC14 with me. It has a BH30 head on it. Um, this is their sort of travel tripod setup. And uh, like I said, the kind of aim of the game on this trip is to travel as lightly as possible. Uh, this still gives me plenty of support for all the lenses that I want to take in a 5D Mark III. Um, and it's just such a lightweight package. I'm going to be doing a bit of hiking through the jungles. Um, like I said, throwing this bag on and off planes and buses and in and out of cars and just pretty much on the move the whole time. So um, I figure this is the right choice. I could have fitted in my two series tripod into this bag as well without much trouble, but um, 
yeah, I really just want to go as light as possible. I've had great success with this tripod in the past, so no worries at all about taking um, the smaller tripod in this case. So that is the, that's everything that's in this main bag. One thing I just want to make a point of as well, um, are some duffels when you put things in, then they're a little bit like a black hole and you can't quite figure out what's in there. You can't see into all the corners. Uh, what I love about this Arcteryx Covert duffel is that the inside of it, as you can see, the whole top opens up really, really wide and the inside is this really light kind of silvery color. It means that you can see everything at a glance that is in this bag. There's no corners, no dark corners for everything to get lost into. Uh, when you put something in this bag, you know it's there. You can see it right in front of you. So just another reason why these are totally awesome bags. And uh, when they're empty, they just uh, fold right down and you can kind of flatten them up. I have a few of them and they just go right under my bed. They're just, uh, they're really compact when they're empty as well. So that is the main bag. Um, let's, uh, let's put this down, hang on. Let's move right into the, the second bag, the camera bag. Um, if you guys don't know about the, the Mindshift uh, R180, then uh, definitely check out my review. I'll put a link in the description, a link on the packing list page as well. Uh, this has got everything else in it. So, um, we've got a rain cover for the pack in this side pocket. Let's go into this main compartment on the top here. Um, in this little mesh pouch here, uh, I have a few other sort of medical supplies, um, just a small amount, just in case my main bag gets lost. Uh, I like to basically have everything that I need to work just in this one bag. Uh, checked in bags get lost all the time. so. Um, I want to have everything that makes me comfortable for at least a few days in this one bag. So, you know, a few little medical supplies in the top there. Another one of these Outdoor Research uh, lightweight accessory bags. This one has my rain jacket in it, um, which is an Arc'teryx uh, Theta SV jacket, I believe. Um, I had an experience last year where I didn't put my jacket in my carry-on bag and of course that's the time the airline lost my bag and when I got to my location it was bloody cold and raining so I always make sure that I have a jacket with me in the bag now and this doubles as a travel pillow as well so um, you know if you're sleeping on the plane or something like that this is a really uh, awesome way to save space you don't need to take a pillow just take this with you laptop in here I've got a th uh, sorry 11 inch MacBook Air uh, this has been my laptop for uh, several years now and I will never go to anything else. Um, I just love how small and lightweight they are. You know, I can fit this vertically in here. I can even fit it horizontally in here. I can stick it in the front pocket. Um, it's just, you can just lose this in anything. It's so small and so lightweight and easily powerful for just ingesting and backing up cards and answering the odd email on the road. That's basically all my workflow entails when I'm on the road. I don't really do any um, serious editing. Although you could do editing with that, but the uh, the screen color is not quite so accurate. Um, now I've got a Canon 20, uh, what have we got here? 24 to 105. Um, this is a lens I'm taking with me because I'm doing a review of it. Um, no other reason than that why I'm carrying this. So this is just a little lens coat uh, neoprene pouch in here. Uh, another lens coat pouch and another lens that's being reviewed. I'm taking the Canon 28mm f2.8 IS lens with me. Uh, super compact little sort of one lens does it all. Um, you know, 35mm and 24mm are really great focal lengths for me. So having a 28mm, something in the middle with IS and something that is this small is a great little travel lens. So I'm really looking forward to reviewing this on this particular trip. So that's just in another little lens coat pouch. Uh, the second of my Canon battery chargers. Laptop power adapter. And then this is my, this is my uh, cable kit. This is my travel cable kit. So what this is, this is in one of these Gura Gear um, etc. cases, they call them. 
me move this aside for a second. Um, what I've done basically with this kit is put together all of the cables and computer accessories that I need into <coughs> excuse me into one little kind of grab bag. Um, it's all too easy with all these little things to forget something when you're on the road. So um, I keep everything that I need to get going in this bag and it stays in this bag. I will not unpack this when I'm at home. This is all duplicate stuff. So I know that when I get going, when I'm traveling somewhere, I just need to grab this bag and I know that I've got everything that I need. So in this bag, I have um, two plug adapters. Um, all your various uh, USB cables, iPod charging cables, iPhone cables, um, this neat little uh, outlets to go from uh, Monster Power thing, which basically gives me three three pin plugs and two USB plugs. So I can use one plug adapter and this, and then I can plug five different things into this and it will work on all voltages. Um, got a little USB 12 volt adapter, Alexa memory card reader, uh, various Thunderbolt adapters, and uh, essentially everything that I need to plug in hard drives and, and get all of my electronic gear up and working. And I just keep it all in this nice little pouch. Now, inside the back panel here, I've got filters. So I'm taking a uh, three stop soft edge grad filter. Uh, circular polarizing filter and again trying to stay lightweight with this kit so I'm not taking too much stuff with me uh, I have a two-stop soft grad and uh, some business cards and then I have a two-stop uh, two-stop solid filter here and um, these are all made by high-tech these filters so that just stays in the back there That's everything from the main compartment. And then the trick with this Rotation 180 is the magic little bag that comes out from the bottom. So in this belt pack here, let's flip this open, uh, we have 5D Mark III with a 17 to 40 F4 L lens on it. 70 to 300 L IS lens. You know, uh, for traveling, I just love this lens. It's a great range, 70 to 300. And because it's so short and stubby, it can fit like that, vertical in this, in this kind of case. You know, a 70 to 200 f2.8 would take up the whole width of this. You know, you can't stand it vertically. So this is a great uh, volume saver when you're packing is this little lens. 24 to 70 f2.8 version two. Uh, this is kind of my go-to everyday lens these days. Um, super sharp, uh, perfect range for travel photography, I think. And then I'm also taking my fisheye lens, 8 to 15 f4 fisheye lens. Um, this is kind of one of those things that I've just got used to taking around. I don't use it very often, but occasionally you just find something that looks awesome with this lens. And I know I'm going to a lot of really uh, tight, close locations where things are going to be right up in my face. So. Um, it's going to be fun to try and see if I can find a good use for this. So what else do we have in here? The zippered pocket here, uh, spare batteries for the, uh, the 5D. Um, incidentally, I'm also taking a 6D with me, uh, which is what's shooting this video right now. So the 6D is coming with me for testing and review. So I'm really looking forward to trying that out some more as well. Um, and I think that's it. You know, that's I've, I've managed to get all the clothes and equipment and support gear and two cameras, six lenses, or was it even seven lenses, um, and laptop and everything I need into two bags. I've weighed the duffel bag. The duffel bag is coming in at 20 kilos. So on some of my flights, the weight limit is 22 kilos, I think. So I've got two kilos left over for adding extra things on the road if I need to. Now the mind shift bag is pretty heavy. Uh, it's definitely over the limit for carry-on bags, but it does fit within the size dimensions of all uh, carry-on regulations with the airlines I'm flying. Hopefully they don't weigh it. Um, you know, that does happen sometimes. There's not really much you can do about that. Uh, but be aware that if they do uh, weigh that and say that, you know, it's too heavy, then uh, there's several ways around it. To start with, with this bag, I can take the camera section out just like this and I can carry that on and uh, probably tap my laptop under my shoulder, uh, un under my arm and, and be pretty good to go like that. There's one more piece of this packing puzzle though that I want to show you. Um, 
in, in the past I've traveled with a separate shoulder bag, which I tend to keep my uh, passport and travel documents and all that kind of stuff in. Uh, it's a Gura Gear bag, which I've reviewed on the site. But uh, this time, as I said, I'm trying to keep this um, much lighter weight. So I've got this little pack safe um, shoulder bag here, and this is designed for keeping your passport and money and uh, travel documents all safe. So being uh, pack safe, they're a company that is really about keeping things safe while you travel. So it's got kind of a mesh, a uh, wire mesh lining. You can't see it, but if you were to try and cut this, then uh, you would see that there's a wire mesh in there. You wouldn't be able to take anything out of it. And the zippers all lock, so that's pretty handy. But the main thing about this is um, that inside here, as well as my passport and my tickets and all that kind of stuff and my cell phone, I have this little waterproof bag. Uh, and this is made by a company called Innate, and it's a fully seam sealed zipper waterproof pouch. And it, what they designed it for is for putting your passport and stuff in and keeping it dry if you're in a, a wet location. What I have though is my main hard drive, my main Seagate hard drive. Now, why is that important? Well, I've got thousands of dollars invested into this particular photography trip. The images on this drive are going to be absolutely everything to me. I won't go anywhere on this trip, even, you know, popping out for a meal in the evening or something. I won't go anywhere without this hard drive on me. This will be on me every day. Um, because I'm going somewhere in the rainy season, it makes perfect sense to keep it in this waterproof pouch like this, because if my clothing gets wet and soaks right through, which is fairly likely, I know that the hard drive, if it's in my pocket, is always going to be protected. So uh, that's the thing, I mean, you can do a lot of things to protect your, um, your gear from getting stolen. Uh, I'm, unfortunately, I'm going to locations where the internet access isn't good enough for me to upload images uh, to my website as, as a backup in that manner. So I just, I just have to be really careful with this hard drive. This has got to be on me at all times. I do have a backup that's in my, in my bag and that'll remain in the hotel room or the house, wherever I'm staying. Uh, but I want to make sure that I have copies of my photos on me at all times. So this little bag, this little waterproof bag, uh, I think it's only $15 or something like that. Um, really, really useful. And I've just got my memory card wallet tied to it and that's clipped inside this bag here uh, with my passport and uh, all my tickets and things like that. So I can have this out at the airport when I need to do all that kind of stuff and filling out immigration forms. It's actually small enough that it fits into the front pocket of my Mindshift bag. So essentially I'm still just carrying two bags, the Mindshift backpack and the Arcteryx duffel that we saw. So. Um, yeah, it really is incredible all, all the stuff that you can get when you when you plan things out, when you think about things a little bit. I've got a huge amount of equipment here, um, and it's, it's really quite refreshing to walk out the door with just a backpack on and one duffel bag in my hand. So really looking forward to this trip. Um, there's going to be a lot of content from it on the, on the website. As I said, look in the description of this video down below, and you'll see a link to a full uh, post about this with a full packing list. You can investigate all this gear in a little bit more detail. And, uh, and on that page as well, I have links to some of my previous um, videos for this kind of stuff as well. So you can see the different gear that I take on different trips. So uh, yeah, thanks for watching. I hope that's useful in some way, particularly if you're planning a trip to uh, Cambodia, which is the main purpose of this trip is to go to Siem Reap and uh, go to Angkor Wat and uh, explore the archaeological park there and then travel around Cambodia and explore some of the more hidden temples and ancient ruins that uh, the beautiful country has to offer. So. Yep, see you soon.